Hi, good afternoon. We're here with Nikki Jakes from the Sawley Kitchen in Ripon. How are you doing, Nikki? I'm very well, and you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today. So if you could start things off and give us a bit of an introduction as to sort of who you are, what it is you do, and how long you've been doing it for, please. Okie dokie, my name's Nikki Jakes, and I own a biscuit business, which is based in Ripon, we're just outside Ripon, and we bake biscuits for a living, and have been doing so since about 2012. Fantastic. So in terms of biscuits, there's obviously plenty of biscuits around. What makes your biscuits different? Some of the best, would you say, your unique selling points? Well, first of all, they're all my own recipes. So um, nobody can um, take that from me. Yeah. Um, and I think because we've been going for a number of years now, I think we've established a little corner of the market where we bespoke, particularly for hotels, delis anybody anybody who wants to buy a classy biscuit will come to us brilliant how did you come across that corner of the market then it was the most weirdest thing actually because uh my husband and i uh were managing my mother-in-law's pub at the time and it was the early years of recession 2011 and it was coming up with an idea of what to do and i was a head chef i've been head chef for a number of years and it was baking biscuits for people to take home really and it sort of grew from there and then before we knew it we got a phone call from the was general manager at swinton park at the time and said i understand i should have your biscuits in our rooms and it's like oh really <laughs> it was, i had absolutely no idea and they said yes we'll have a meeting tomorrow at two o'clock and we came off that phone call thinking what the heck just happened how do you do a presentation mm -hmm. never done a presentation in our lives before so and they were our first customer and they still are so that's you know it. yeah it's brilliant you know so yeah that's how it started purely by a phone call that's how we got to the hotel biscuit market and, uh, the word of mouth the biscuit's been in the mouth of the <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah in more ways than one yeah absolutely yeah. and the taste <laughs> taste obviously uh proved um sealing the deal with it so that's brilliant that's um that's a great experience to share thank you so in terms of the business journey from that point and finding your sort of niche in the market what's it been like how would you describe it well there's been peaks and huge troughs mm. um uh, as i say we originated in the kitchen the solly arms and um, which have been in my husband's mum's um, family for you know, 40 odd years then she decided to retire so it was went up for option and um which left us sort of you know as a loose said no job no home so it was like, okay, started doing this. So let's continue and see if there's any legs in it. So that was a sort of the, what galvanized us into action really. And to re, you know, reestablish your lives direction from, you know, in your early fifties from, you know, a, you know, a bit of a curveball. Yeah. Uh, and so then we thought, well, I trained with Betty's originally. Um, so I thought, well, you know what, let's see if we can find a market, take to market, so at least we can feed ourselves. So that was basically it, really. Um, and, you know, started trading with Northern Dales Farmers Market. Um, we didn't have a van. We didn't have any form of transport whatsoever. And the market manager there had a van that was being stuck in his field for years. And he said, you can have that if you like. So we paid for it, 50 quid a week, 200 quid it was. We didn't have any money. So so literally, we, we, it was called Vinnie the Van because it had a hard life. Um, <laughs> and that, that set us on our, our, our way, you know, and then we... Yeah. Uh, Found a market stall, bought a market stall, and then one thing led to another, you know, and then we took on a unit. And um, we have had some incredibly kind people to us over over the years. Um, the first chap, um, apart from the market manager, Nigel, was um the guy who originally owned Sigmar Business Park. And we went to him and said, Let look, we we really need somewhere to base our business. We have no money, we will pay you, but we have to have pay you at the moment. So, biscuits. <laughs> yeah. so he said, well, you know what, let's give it three months. And he let us take a unit, um, prove ourselves. We, you know, we would, we signed documents that we would pay him, but he let us go for the first three months without paying any rent in order to get ourselves on our feet. And it was, it was people kindness like that. Another lady came to work with us who had worked with us at the pub and she just said, I don't want you to pay me. She said, you, you use my wages for flour. You need to buy flour um, and then pay me when you can. And we did. And so we were incredibly lucky that people 
held us high enough in regard to know that we could we could make a go of it. So yeah, so they, they were the, an amazing human kindness. Fantastic, you know? that's a yeah. great story. You say you're lucky, but I, you know, it comes, I imagine, from the type of people that you you are, in order to to have people respond in that way to to you. So, you know. Well, well, match was always be. It's always. I mean, it, as people sort of they flip it with the word now, but we were always being sort of like you know, treat people how you wish to be treated yourself, and above all, be kind. If you yeah. haven't anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And that's the mantra that Rob and I live live by. You know, so yeah. to be that held us in good stead. Great words there, thank you. Um, so from all that, um, if there's one lesson that you could well pick out or just before we move on to that actually another another question so we've kind of this we've got to this point what does the future look like for for you guys now and what are what are the challenges that you see and opportunities that you have right well um it's 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 looking incredibly busy we are very very fortunate and very very grateful that um word of mouth keeps us going um and as, as housekeepers move hotels they take us with them so um, whether or not, because we have been around for a while and the brand is hopefully well established, that, you know, it's looking very busy. Um, it's, you know, we're, we're continuing to grow. This year earlier, earlier this year I took another unit. So now I've got three units and three lockups. So constantly we're expanding our space. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so it, it's looking, it's looking very um, hard, but exciting. Well, that's you know an opportunity to grow as a lot of people would would um really want to to take that so uh, yeah i suppose the, the the challenge is just keeping on how big's your team now then um gosh i keep i keep I sometimes i do a count and i forget um i think there's about eight of us that's <laughs> it <take> a couple <laughs> you know because <Yeah. laughs> you know, we do we do also get people to, which is another thing is a lovely thing we get university students or people are on holidays that used to work for us and they come back and say, I could do with a few bob, you know, have you got any work? Say, so, yeah, start tomorrow. So people, you know, the door is always open. When anybody leaves, the door is always open. And sometimes if people find themselves a bit hard up, they need some extra pennies, so they'll come back in an hour door. Fantastic. So out of all that experience to date and the journey you've, you've been to, what would you say is the biggest lesson if there's one that you can pick out? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, so obviously, having read about us, you know that I lost my husband to cancer yeah. in 2020, um, and he'd been we've been business partners all our lives. 36 years of them, we've been business partners. So that's the thing. That's that, that lesson that taught me. I turned. I chose to turn the key and go. Do you know what? I've had enough. I'm out of here. The other was was pride and stubbornness. Like we've worked too damn hard to get where we've got. So I think that's the biggest lesson is just like keep plugging away. Don't give in. I mean, obviously, try and make careful decisions. You do make mistakes, big huge mistakes, but it's I, I I'm I'm very stoic. I won't give in. I'm very stubborn. Probably that's not my best quality, but you know, it, it keeps me grounded. Well, I, yeah, I think with all our qualities, they can be strengths and they can be weaknesses. It's finding that. Yeah. Uh, balance in between to to utilize them accordingly in the situations you find yourself in so um that's again that's another great share and, and thank you for being so open with that and, and sharing that so if there's a piece of advice you could offer someone just starting out in business what would that be do your sums yeah put in the solid foundation because we can all dream and we can all grab and think oh i want to be in a supermarket i want to be this i want to be that um, one route we've chosen and made the decision not to is to not do the supermarkets because I don't think we're in a supermarket. I know our shop, if I knocked a packet of biscuits on the floor and it broke, I'd pick up and get another one. And so I would want to see our, our uh, brand in a discount box, you know, with all, all broken bits. But it was do your numbers and and don't pretend. You know, there's the electricity costs, you know, everything costs something. Don't pretend it doesn't cost something. So do your figures and put in firm foundations because sometimes it's better to grow organically and slowly rather than, you know, massively at the front and then all of a sudden you implode like a balloon. You know, I like to think that we've got the solid foundations that we've plugged away and plugged away. And I, I like to think that our foundations are solid um, for the next generation, you know. 
great. It's a family business, isn't it? I know you've got your yeah. son and daughter there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, my daughter lived in Lanzarote. So um, she, when her dad died, she took over social media because I was about done with photographs of ginger things. So there's only so many more pictures I could take. Um, yeah. And uh, obviously then Dan joined the business when his dad was poorly. And and then since then, Dan's partner, Kirsty, she's joined the business as well and taken over social media from our daughter because she's so busy over in Lanzarote. Um, she was finding it hard to juggle all the balls. But, you know, no. So, it's, yeah, complete family business and very proud. I mean, that's what that's Rob's legacy to us is that he was such a family man. You know, it was very, very important. And that's very important. That's the that's at the heart of it all. Yeah, that's that's a huge, unique selling point, isn't it? That's uh, is coming across anyway in this this interview. Um, so what inspired? Again, this question I could hazard a guess, but it'd be great to hear in your own words what inspires you to to do what you do. It could be, you know, uh, obviously the the background to the business, what you've been through. Um, but yeah, what's your kind of passions? I suppose that drive you, that inspire you to do what you do. And is there anything that you use for inspiration? It's one of those weird things. It's, there's certain things you know and you don't know why you know them. I suppose it's like why a dancer can dance and a painter can paint. Mm -hmm. There's something inherent in my head that I know what goes together. And yeah. so I, I don't, I, can, I can't explain why, but that's what keeps me going, you know, and I'm always trying to develop new products. You know, at the moment, I've got some olives sat in a drawer just to sing and to develop any bacteria for six months. You know, those sorts of things. So, um, it's it's just that that knowledge and feel. It's 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 an, un, an, an sort of like almost not. It's not tangible. I can't really explain it. I just know that it works. And if somebody suggests an idea in my gut, if I know it ain't going to work, it ain't going to work. And I can't explain why. But I think that is that's what keeps me going is that I'm, I'm probably few, refusal to give in my son that said to me recently he said mom have you ever thought you know ever thought about retiring I don't know what he's trying to say there really but I said <laughs> well I might go down from seven days to six and that was my answer <laughs> uh oh <laughs> well, I totally get you know you don't need to put it into words I think we we get what it is it's that flow isn't it something that you're in, it's inherent within you um and you're exploring that and you're, yeah. you're living that through through what you do which is great because not everybody gets to do that <laughs> no they don't but it's weird as well i mean we talk about having a sort of separate language and it is because within our workplace mm -hmm. i mean everybody that works there has never come with a baking experience they've all come you know because they wanted to be involved within the business but they, they never didn't know how to do anything on a commercial scale and we have our own language. I mean, I didn't even know what a double wall, you know, box was or a ceiling tape. I mean, it was, I was a chef, you know, I wasn't <laughs> So you develop, you, you find, you find uh, on the way and you think about the journey where you started. Now look at the first stalls we set up and they're horrendous, but at the time they look good um, to where we are now. And, that, and that's, that's the journey. I mean, I intend to in the new year is actually on the wall in the bakehouse as, and also as a sort of like a tribute to Rob is to put, to sort of like um, put uh, memories of our journey because I do pinch myself sometimes and I'm stood like at the market the weekend, it's pouring with rain. I'm thinking, am I going to make a sale? Is anybody ever going to buy anything for me today? And I'm threading labels trying to think, well, at least I'm threading labels. So at least I'm paying my way, you know, and you still have that humble approach thinking, oh, does anybody really like what I do? And you, I mean, it's like that self-doubt you have all the time. And I suppose in a way, then somebody goes, oh, I sold something. That's good. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> Silly, isn't it? You know, move on just... to the next self doubt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone yeah. you know is just every every store's different. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, I love that. So, lastly, in terms of any latest news around what you're up to, or just even potentially featuring a website, let us know the the website address where we can buy the biscuits. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, www.solikitchen.co.uk. I'm um, and. There's a um, new subscriber um, offers on all the time um, and stuff. So when we're just launching some of our summer uh, Christmas range and I've just reinvented the digestive, which I'm very excited about. It's taken me oh probably a good nine months, um, but <laughs> I'm really excited because it, it tastes, to me, it tastes like the digestive of my childhood. So yeah, that's my big news is I have, I have launched the digestive. <laughs> 
I'm, we'll end on that huge boat. <laughs> you know, you really invented a digestive. Okay. <laughs> well, Nikki, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. Thank you very much for sharing all that you have. And I uh, genuinely wish you all the best for the, thank you. the business. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time.